Welcome to the channel. Building overseas doesn't have to be a nightmare. My goal is to help you make that dream a reality. Expect weekly tips on the process of building that dream home and the lifestyle it brings. So check out my videos, subscribe and share. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. First things first, let's check the audio. Let me know uh, if you are there. Just a feedback on the audio would be great. Sometimes I have uh, some audio issues. Of, um, put all this money, all this gear, and then sometimes it doesn't work as it should. Anyway, so if I can get a good feedback from any of you out there, that'd be great. So today will be just a ton of questions. So if you have questions, we just, you know, see how many questions uh, can we go through in, the, in about 30 minutes or so. So if I can get a feedback on the audit, that'd be great. So anyway, I hope everybody is doing well. Um, and do you know what this channel is about? It's about the building series, investing in Africa, uh, planning well financially, and also the possibility of maybe if you want to move uh, down there and how you are going to thrive, okay? So that is how, oh, it's Clay, greetings. Thank you very much, Leslie, thanks for joining me. So today's podcast is more like for you guys. So we're gonna, you guys are gonna throw in the questions and then I'm gonna tackle them, I'm gonna try to tackle them uh, as much as um, I can. And if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, um, okay? And so it's just about throwing some. So Leslie, if you have any questions, just put it out there and we keep going. Um, so anyway, um, this year, like 2022, I believe, still 2022, it's about progress, right? It's about progress. And the link is up there. You know, if you want to join me, you can click on this link and then that'll be, we'll be glad to have you here. Okay. All right. So let's take it. Um, so you are building or think about building, buying land, uh, you know, that good stuff. And hopefully you are doing your homework, uh, you know, to make sure that everything is good. And also um, understand is that building is going to take a lot of time planning. Um, there's something called building too fast. Um, and so most of us will probably take a couple of years, four or five years for most people. Um, that'll be the range for us to, you know, to take because, um, you know, it's, it's not uh, it's not cheap. It's very expensive, and so uh, we take us that long. Even if you take five, six years, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's not a race. Build something that is going to work long term. Um, if you have a growing family, factor that in, um, and that kinds of stuff. Uh, Takisha, thank you. I uh, hope you're doing well. I haven't heard from you in a while. Glad you could join us. So like I said, today is for you guys. You know, So start throwing your questions and then I will take it out from there. Okay? Um, so I always have of the mindset that you must have backup plans to backup plans. Um, even if you think America is the greatest place for you uh, and everything is working so well for you, I think... You should also put yourself uh, in a position that maybe Africa becomes another option for you, right? Uh, maybe down the road, uh, that option might become more lucrative or it might be more uh, enticing. And so it's about uh, it's about just having diversity, right? Diversity of, of options um, so you don't feel yourself kind of like feel trapped in one location. Um, and so, and so it's very, very important. Uh, Royal Kemet, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I uh, hope all is well. And so, and so it's about it's about doing that. Um, it's about having having options, you know, for yourself now and also into into the immediate and, and down the road uh, to be able to have an incredible life. And so, this is what all is about. <laughs> So this is why we put the information out there. This is why, um, uh, you know, we come to you every Saturday and trying to make sure, you know, you are making progress on the project. Okay. So 
Well, start with this building thing, right? So you start, you know, as you know, there's so many, many videos out there. A lot of people are building, uh, which is great. Um, you still got to, you know, figure out where you get a quality information from. Them, okay. Um, so electrical pipes for decking, are they pressure pipe? Pressure pipe. First, I mean pressure pipe options, or is it worth the extra cost? Um, so if you can break it down a little bit for me, Leslie. Um, I do understand what I mean by pressure pipe in, in terms of uh, you want to use pipe pipes that uh, baby can withstand the, the weight of the concrete. Yeah, if that's what you're saying, yes. Uh, you want to use pipes that will be able, uh, you know, to do that. And also, uh, when you're doing the decking, when you're doing the electrical for decking, I think people um, people underestimate a lot of things that you would need. Um, and so it is really, really, it is always good to do this. Okay, it's always good to do this. Is to, You have your standard. Most electrician in Ghana can give you your standard outlet for, let's say, um, um, AC unit or fan or the lighting systems. Uh, outlet for plugins and stuff like that. Um, maybe some for the um, the hot shower um, outlet um, and that kinds of stuff. That is always important. But also too, I am I am always um, of the mindset that um, look at homes and even look at where you live. Look at where you have some outlets, some lightings and stuff like that, and you want to incorporate that because that's going to be different in Ghana. Are definitely going to be different uh, in Ghana, so you can have the extra. Like one thing I always add this uh, is that the ability to turn off the light in multiple areas in a room, um, that is nice. So let's say if if you are you know on the bed trying to sleep, you don't have to get up and go to the around the door and turn and turn the light off. There's another um, uh, power switch next to the bed. Uh, Preferably, don't put it lower because then your bed frame might cover it. From experience, so make sure it's a little bit high and off the bed, um, so that you can turn uh, power off and, and that kinds of stuff. So, or if you want to, um, so that is very helpful. So yes, the pressure pipes uh, would be good to make sure they can uh, withstand the uh, the weight of the concrete, but always too, you know, make sure you have you have more outlet and uh, like for for. For men, uh, sometimes we we want other outlets in the uh, by the sink, you know, for us to shave our beer, our facial hair, and stuff like that. That is always good. So always have that, right? Always have that. Uh, I am very lucky, my electrician. I don't have to tell him a lot of stuff. Uh, I just tell him what I want, and so he deliver. Your electrician might not be the same, so it's very good to, uh, for you to help them out uh, with you know where you want placement and all kinds of stuff. Angie, glad your trip was very successful. Welcome back. Uh, um, okay, so I answered that. Martins, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me. Hope all is well, brother. And so, so it's just one of those things. Uh, I, I, I really think uh, when it comes to uh, electrical phase two, when they start doing the piping, um, I think uh, it's good you are underground because for me, there's so many things I like to do. I like external. Um, lights um, and all kinds of stuff that um, I have planned for this new project, um, you know, and stuff like that. So I definitely have to be on the ground. So okay, I'll need another light here. So let's put um, uh, a pipe here for for all kinds of stuff. And um, so you have to be on the ground so they can connect everything. And so so make sure that maybe if you don't want to overload the panel, so you might need two panels and then the space inadequate. If you want to do solar, they are also putting in the provisional, uh, I think, what is it? We're doing three-inch pipe uh, through the wall to the solar roof uh, and that kinds of stuff uh, to, to you know, to run it. So so it's about um, being having a comprehensive and provisional approach to all these things. And, and, and so the communication is very, very, uh, communication is very, very important. I talk to my guys almost every day. And so it's very, very important because um, you don't want to finish your decking, then you're going back and cracking. Okay. I mean, Mr. Lamte, thank you. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Um, so today is for you guys, right? So it's about throwing your questions 
and then we're gonna go so leslie started and and then we're gonna take it uh from there i wanted to you know give you uh the chance to uh yes um and then we can we can take it i am of the view of respect the architectural integrity what do i mean by that um uh it doesn't work well if you compare if you if you're blending in mediterranean and then modern um it doesn't work where the greatest modern will work closest to contemporary um and so respect that keep it very um you know clean cut you know straight lines or if you want some design for mediterranean keep it mediterranean so what do i mean by the mediterranean that means you're going to have pillars you're going to have um uh, uh, columns in their design columns or pillars uh, you're going to have arch windows uh, with some kind of design and so that means you're probably going to do some balusters with concrete um and so it's about uh because when you start messing mixing a mediterranean with you know, glass and that and all kinds of stuff um it kinds of just makes the house a little bit uh confused and stuff like that so keep it that and then the interior you can play with a lot of stuff or uh, balance balance everything that you need okay um so so here's a couple of things so here's a couple of things leslie you want to think about glass balustrade versus galvanized steel balustrades um so a couple of things uh, when you have glass children right you got to think about children uh what kind of glass you have do you have um um do you have the tempered glass in there um is it laminated glass in there which have some kind of uh uh polyurethane or some kind of a plastic in between them that sandwich in them so then when it breaks the whole kind of like something on your windshield right um so so that is very very important now um so you have to think about that too um glass sometimes can be really, really expensive uh depending on the quality of glass um i'm not there yet but i'm start getting coats and whew, it's not um it's not uh cheap but um so but sometimes it is worth paying that money for that uh the governor is still balustrade um um people use that obviously quality 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 they all you know they are going to tell you all of them is quality but uh, how will you know that's the question and so uh, the thing with the balustrade is this it all comes down to the installation which to me i think is very very important um and try to have people not lean on them uh just just create have them have that habit of not lean i'm not a fan of leaning on balustrades uh because over time uh, they are going to be weakened uh um, the anchoring device eventually is going to be weakened um, over time. And so you don't want to be leaning on that. Um, so avoid that uh, at all costs. Um, so so it depends. Um, so watch the installation. And also there will be some houses that maybe depend on the on the architectural design. You know, um, galvanized steel balustrade is going to look better. If you're going modern or uh, contemporary, then maybe the glass comes in um, for for Mediterranean, then you probably, you know, you know, glass with Mediterranean doesn't flow well. It's uh, it's probably gonna be like galvanized steel or some kind of like um, a cement uh, balustrade or something like that. So just um, make sure that installation equipment is robust and is going to stay. It's going to be almost kind of like permanent on the ground. And also avoid telling people to lean over. Uh, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so um, come up with a good design. Find some designs if you are going to do steel or even a glass. Find some designs and then see if it can be it can be duplicated. Um, okay. And so then ask for warranty. You know, ask what is the warranty period um, and, and that kinds of stuff. Um, so have the conversation. Have the conversation. But uh, if you have young children, sometimes the glass then becomes... Uh, you know, a little bit uh safety hazardous in terms of what kind of glass uh, you are going to um use all right so i hope i hope that was helpful okay so that was a good question that's a good question um and so the so don't be you know don't be afraid to use online okay there's a 
or sometimes even look at designs such as um such as um you know combination of glass and um uh, and, and steel or glass and concrete and um and then there's some nice ones out there Concrete kitchen cabinet versus wooden cabinet in rental properties. Your take, your take, your take, your take. So, um, so I'll give you my take. You, I bet you say you want my take. Okay. So I am not a fan. I'm not a fan for concrete, like a countertop and concrete cabinet, uh, for indoor, for indoor space. Okay. I'm not. And the reason being is this: uh, cabinets are things that eventually you will have to change. Um, to, 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 you know, cause things, technology, you know, designs, everything is getting, you know, things are coming up. So let's say if you rent out property, right? So you have a rental property. Why are you going to say, why are you saying I'm going to do the concrete because it's durable X, Y, Z and stuff like that. But then what happens 10 years from now, when a different sort of cabinets, you know, comes around and it's efficient, it's affordable, it's quality. And, and you want to change that. Then that means if you have to take out the concrete, uh, that concrete is going to destroy a bunch of your tires on the ground. It's going to be a mess than if you have a wooden cabinet, right? And so that is the only thing. If it's an outdoor kitchen, yeah, go for it. But if it's an indoor kitchen and you do your concrete, even if it's nice, uh, it's just permanent. Certain things are almost permanent. You know, you can renovate that, but it's going to be a disruption. It's going to cause other damages. Uh, especially to the floor and sometimes to the wall as well. And so and so that is the thing that you have to uh, because I think about maybe every 10 years, um, if I can re you know resurface the cabinets, I probably will change them to something else. And so it makes it easier uh, you know to change or you can even take the cabinet out and repaint them a different color uh, or, or change some few fixtures. To make it look like brand new, concrete uh, is very difficult. Uh, it's very very difficult to do. So that is that is my personal take on how I would I would do it. Um, but in terms of let's say you're doing an outdoor kitchen, yes, you can do a cabinet, a concrete cabinet and co uh, concrete, um, you know, um, kitchen set could be island or whatever for an outdoor. For indoor, it becomes a little bit tricky. Okay. What is the difference between architectural design in Ghana and Nigeria? Hey, our Niger boys, they go big. Um, and so probably, they're probably using, uh, I, I have not looked at Nigerian plan, but being, of, uh, they'll probably use the same um, metric system in terms of measurement. Uh, Nigerians though, um, what I noticed from Nigeria, because I have some Nigerians, um, do some work on the first house for me they will come along a little little bit on this second project is that you know nigeria they go big right they go big uh it's massive it's a statement house uh, it's a ton of designs sometimes it's overdone um especially on the exterior and stuff like that so they do you don't see a lot of clean uh kind of like strictly strictly super modern homes in Nigeria, you see a lot of designs like like uh, like a, a Mediterranean villa type, uh, you know, fixtures, and uh, and they go big, you know, they go bigger. I think Nigerians build bigger, uh, more massive, more like a statement house, um, like something that if you are driving out, you'd be like, hey, this one, the yeah. house, house, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, and stuff like that. So, but but I think also too is I always see it, and I've and I've seen this. I've I've still seen. I do watch some videos from um, um, Nigeria and stuff like that. Um, especially the one on that island, I forgot the island name. And so I I do watch them. But I always say that uh, most African countries are still lagging with the interior interior thing is like I think the exterior we can we can have like really really nice homes and stuff like that in terms of the architectural piece but I think the interior some are very good but I think like we, it is always the under space because sometimes 
uh, the house looks very, very nice. You go in there and it looks like an office type because too many glasses in there. And it doesn't really give you the form of, uh, the, you know, the feeling of comfort and the environment. It looks more like classical, like a business office and stuff like that. So I would say, what did, what did you want in the house? Is it one for entertainment? Do you want something that is cozy? Do you want something you can go and relax? And then, so that is, you must have an idea. What is it that you want? And then you can go in there and create that inspiration, uh, you know, for yourself. Um, because um, there are some homes that they are really nice, but it doesn't really bring a uh, relaxation because, uh, you know, the colors are too bright. You know, it's not comfortable. The spacing uh, it doesn't flow with the energy. You know, you must understand energy with space. Um, you know, there's some place you go in there and you like, man, you feel, you know, you, you get in a creative state and some place you go in there, you feel very uninspired, right? And so, um, yes, they do, they do go. I know like in terms of the balustrade, cement balustrade designs, um, you know, you know, gates, pillars and those designs, as far as I know, Nigerians and Togolese are the best in that aspect in terms of executing that, that is their niche. You know they can they can do a good job. It's something that the Ghanaians uh, walked away from from many many years ago. So um, they are good. So um, so but at the end of the day, you you pick. Um, so don't forget the inside. Okay, the inside is to me. I'm more. I'm all about seventy percent inside, thirty percent outside. Right. You know. So don't forget the landscape. Um, I think also Nigeria, just like Ghana too, is like we we got to use we got to bring more trees back, right? We really got to bring more trees into the houses. Okay, um, so that'll be my piece. Ajia, thank you for joining me. Uh, um, okay, so throw the questions and we will take it. All right, Rwanda has beautiful home designs and more because I've seen some homes over there. I agree. Uh, I've seen one of their gated community. Um, and, and, and they are very, very nice. And so, and, and one thing, you know, when we look at cost, one thing we have to put into and stuff like that, watch the dollar, watch the inflation, understand the financial market, you know, how it affects where you are building. All these things that I give, you know, I share with people on consultation, I'm, uh, I'm sharing with, with you guys, is that um, I'm always looking at it. Uh, and then when in turn, I do the project to, to favor my to, to favor myself financially because you know the dollar is strong at that time and before the inflation catch up and all that stuff so so look at that be be that flexible or you know look at that because you know in africa you know six months from a quote you got six months ago can be you know a difference of 15 20 30 percent to some place 30 percent you know more and so you have to you have to look at that and build a house you can afford uh, don't be money poor. Uh, um, I don't care if it's three bedroom, whatever. Build that, and you can also make it nice and make it something that uh, you are going to enjoy. Um, I was going to say the mansions are overrated, but that conversation will come down the road. Okay. Choice to live and build in Ghana. Yes. Um, um, Obviously, I'm there. I'm a little bit biased to that place. Um, but it's all about, you know, strategic planning, right? Uh, strategic planning. And, and, and when you start, uh, you want to get this thing that very, very quickly so you can rec recuperate some cost and start saving for the lifestyle, right? Because when you are building, you have no lifestyle. <laughs> you know, you don't have any lifestyle. Um, so uh, it sucks sometimes. But but you know what it is, um, you know you know you know what you are trying to accomplish, and after that, you can really really enjoy. So I have to figure that I don't have any lifestyle a little bit uh, for the next several years. But but then it's like when I'm done, I'm going I'm, I'm going to make up for all the time that I didn't get to you know um, enjoy all the hard work. So so just understand that, okay? And you can make any house beautiful: three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom. Um, it really doesn't matter. So, and then let's plant more trees. Let's plant more trees. Uh, I have the first half. I have about when I go this time, I'll do some little bit video. You guys can see the compound. I have 
uh at least uh, i think 50 trees over there so with this new build i'm trying to go something crazy double that and stuff like that so um okay all right throw your questions in there and then we will take it you know and run with it other than that uh stay focused on there's so many distractions for us both uh, locally internationally but stay stay focused and control um what you can control and the things you can control let it fall where it needs to be um it's, it's good to go into this uh messianic mission uh, missions and stuff but charity begins at home take care of the house first put yourself in a great place establish a strong legacy then you can go and do that noble work you want to do um you know as well as Court for a very much. <laughs> That's a bad question, Angie. Uh, four bedroom, four bedroom. Uh, it's a lot of steak. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let me give it a shot. Four bedroom, bungalow. So let's go bungalow. Uh, what we have, you know, um, 100 by 70. So all inclusive. So I mean, all inclusive. That means you're going to have power. You're going to have uh, water. You can have your gracious systems, you can have light, everything, furniture, everything. The only thing not included is your clothes, right? So furniture, everything is included. Uh, four bedroom, square footage, let's say 2,500. Um, 2,000 will be a little bit small if you're doing a suite. Uh, so let's say 2,500 um, to 2,750. Okay. Landscape, everything included. So let's look at it on the low end, or very, very low end. Uh, building in Accra. Um, you have generator or solar on low end, 175, 200. That would be basically having the, that's a mixture of high quality and some medium quality, you know, um, things in there. Um, that will get you everything, uh, everything included. So uh, labor and that kinds of stuff. If you're on the ground, maybe you can pick and choose and cut back on, on certain things. And also it's very difficult. How much do you want to spend? Because a quality cabinet will cost you about 5,000. There's no, you know, the cabinet can go 15, 10, 15,000 on the high end, but a medium quality cabinet will cost you about 5,000, uh, like for maybe an L shape cabinet and stuff like that. Then you gotta throw in the appliances, uh, quality, what you want, what kind of quality ties you want, you know, what else do you want, CCTV. Um, so it's um, it's that, uh, it's, um, it's a lot in that, okay? So, but like I always say, I never look at the total cost per se, unless um, I have an idea how much is going to, and I say, okay, can I save, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 a year. Is it feasible to do it five, six, six years and that kind of stuff? And then I just take off. I take off and then I'm, I'll figure a way to make it happen. And that is how it always happens. Um, because I believe that there'll be motivation points you know, as you're building to to get you to hone in and, um, and, and do that kind of stuff, okay? But actually, I will get you a quote, okay? We're working on that. Um, Leslie, uh, so you're talking about, uh, ammo cable, um, ideally, 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 I know that's an extra cost. Um, ammo cable is nice. It's nice in the stand that, um, it creates, you know, cause, cause sometimes depending on where, how the, the main line is coming to the house, it can be an eyesore. You have this wire coming all the way to the front of the house, depending on where it's coming, especially if it's coming to the front, it can be a lot of ISO. Um, so when you do ammo cable underground, um, you know, it's, it's expensive. I, the Kaswa house is like that, it's ammo cable. Um, I, I think that'd be best, but here's the danger in ammo cable is this, is uh you you probably want to go a little bit go about a minimum of two feet deep bury it and then one foot after that put a yellow tape a yellow tape on that and make sure you know where this line is 
uh, because if something happens and somebody's digging on the ground and they hit that line, it will kill them immediately. It will kill them. They're not, they're not going to survive that. So, so that is the thing that um, I've seen close call, close call of that in which what had happened was, um, actually that was even like the, the, the power line to the generator. They were working on the pavement blocks. They were cutting to, to run the AC, you know, the AC drips, the secondary unit outside to run the pipes and, and they cut really uh, through through that cable line. So so bury, bury it a little bit further and make sure you have a yellow tape uh, and also let people know like, hey, there's no digging. There's no digging around that line, okay? Um, so so that is that. But I think it's a cleaner look if you can if you can pay for it. It's a much cleaner look. Um, you don't see any wires taking extending from the house. Um, so um, I'll, I'll probably um, I'll see if I can do that for for this this house and stuff like that. But but it can be it can be expensive. You go the charge by distance by a number of meters from from the pole. Um, and so make sure it's done well. Make sure they use uh, PVC pipes all the way from the pole all the way to the ground, okay? You don't want to, it's hard to cut, you know, I'll be honest, which is very hard to cut. It's very solid, but let's make sure there's, there's a PVC, PVC pipe all the way from the pole. And um, then once you get to underground, you don't need to wrap any PVC pipes. Over. Let's continue. Okay. Underground building, no, not common. Um, and I always say too, we've, you know, I've had uh, discussions with this. To be honest with you, to be honest with you, I don't think it's necessary uh, because in the U.S., you know, you don't find basement um, in hot climate. Or you find it more in the cold climate, and, and in Africa too, you don't, you, you just don't tend to stay indoor. You know, there's, you know, you tend to stay out. And so, and I've had conversation with people. They say, oh, the kids will go in the basement. I said, listen, those kids go to Africa. They're not in the basement. They are outside. And so um, now maybe if you are building for an apartment, you want to include And so you have to really watch out for the raining season, how you're going to keep the moisture out um, and that kinds of stuff. Uh, it makes it, it has to be done well, right? Um, it's not for every place, but it's not common. It's not really common. Or not every builder can execute it. Every builder can go down and build it, but also you have to prevent moisture, mold prevention down there, and and also how to make sure water is not coming in uh, when you start bringing up and you put the windows and that kind of stuff. So not very common. Yeah. So even if they put real concrete, yeah, let them put the the you know the yellow tapes, uh, the caution tape. Make sure they put that in the um so so when people are digging they see that stuff it's a no-go uh there's nothing to be played with uh because the amount of current that is running through that thing is 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 going to uh is going to send you to the ancestors very soon okay um all right what is your take on electrical doing both 110, 220? Um, I would say this, uh, it can be a little bit expensive. So I, I would say this, uh, ideally uh, do both. Uh, if you can't do it for the whole house, uh, where you're gonna put certain appliances or at least in each bedroom, have at least one outlet for one, um, at least in Ghana, and that'd be the um, 220. So have one for at least uh, 110. It helps when you buy equipment. Uh, I know some of the equipment are now, they're making a dual voltage, uh, which is good. I don't know why they not do all of them like that. It would be easier. And so, or if you want to change certain appliances, or so someday you ship something from, if you're in the UK, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're in uh, you know, US and certain part of the world, then you know that you can just plug it in, um, stuff like that. So I think just do that. Um, and. Uh, and then you have to get some kind of transformer uh, to do a step down for all the 110 and uh, that'll go into that. Uh, someday I'm gonna do a video on that and I'll show you 
you know, the transformer that I use for my other house. Uh, but it's very, very convenient when you have the 110 and 120. I have not everywhere in the house, um, but most places I have them as well. Okay. So if you can do both, I think I think that would be awesome. So, uh, but I'm hoping in the future they can do all devices or dual voltages in there. That'd be, that'd be awesome. All right. Okay. Let's a uh, few more questions and then we can wrap it up. Uh, so let me know. Bring them. Bring them. This is uh, the only time. Um, and also too is um. Make your house unique. Make your house unique. Challenge yourself to make it unique. Uh, like um, take inspiration, but make it make it unique. And then sometimes people will like Tony. Okay, if somebody wants to get the whole design of your house and everything, um, it's um, you know, it depends. It depends. Um, the the Casua house. Nobody has the design. People have off in the past. People have uh, asked to buy the plan, um, and I said no. Um, with this plan, only one person has the plan, uh, but they're building a whole different area. But mine is still going to be different because you know I'm I'm still changing stuff in the um, and so and so it's kind of like I know like all the modern looks like the same thing so. I'm, I'm gonna do modern contemporary. Probably split it 50-50 um, in the and stuff like that. So just make make your house unique and um, uh, to you. At the end of the day, if you're enjoying it, that's all that matters. Okay, build to your liking. Uh, don't build for for somebody to enjoy. Build to your liking. And one thing I'm going to share with you that you must almost bear in mind. Okay. Um. It's going to be hard, but it's truth, okay? So you start this endeavor, just like anything. You start a business, you know, you know, you start a new job, you know, you know, whatever you are winning in life. Um, the idea that um, friends and family, all of them, some say all friends and family, are going to be happy for you that you are doing these things, uh, it's not true. It's, it's, not, it's not going to happen. So... The reasons why you are building must be fundamentally sound. You are building for yourself to enjoy and, and then maybe someday pass it on or sell it or rent it. That is why you are doing it. You are not building to for somebody to say, it's nice, congratulations, you are doing a good job. You will have people that will do that. But, um, you know, hopefully the reasons for yourself is... Um, strong and so because you are going to experience this <laughs> you know you are going to experience when you finish the house you are going to see you know you you a lot of things going to happen uh, around your circle of you know uh, influence or association and so from experience I'm telling you that build it for you do it for you do it because you want to do it because you enjoy it do it because it's going to make you happy. Do it because, like, you are going to upgrade your life. That is what you are doing. If other people say, good job, thank you, that's bonus. But do it because it's a necessity uh, for you to have the options. And so you don't feel like you're stuck here um, and stuff like that. So and I can tell you, once you have the two options, uh, you can deal with a lot of stuff that we deal with in the West because you have options, okay? So do it on that. In that process, gravitate with people that are really, really down with you, that really, really want to help you uh, grow and and accomplish those too, right? And so, but be strong, be be, be focused, and, and every year cycle your friends, you know, because like true, true talk, cycle, cycle, what you are meant to do and where you need to be, not everybody is supposed to be on the journey for you. Um, so you have you must understand that that is, that is just life, um, and it's your dream, and you owe it to yourself to make it happen. So I'll be here, you know, cheering you on. Go get it, because me, I'm going, I'm going beyond the top. 
So I'll be cheering for you to, to also get it. Okay? Yes, the finished product. That's all it is. Because when it's done, when it's done, I am telling you, it is one of the most incredible things you could do. Um, and nobody from that moment, your self-image, your respect for yourself, your belief is so high, nobody can put you down. Nobody. Nobody can do that. And I want you guys to be able to experience that. And then you'll be crazy enough, like me, to want to do it again and even do it much better. Okay. And so I believe in you. Hang in there. Hang in there. I know it is. Um, I know what it takes. I know the financial cost. I know the sacrifice you make. I know that, you know, all the stuff that are happening. I know the setbacks. Um, but I believe in you. I believe that you are more than capable because if I can do it, I think, you know, any of you that put your mind to it, you can also do it and do it in your way um, to your, um, you know, expectations and beyond. All right. So thank you. I appreciate you spending your Saturday evening and afternoon with me. I don't take you for granted. I'm still doing some projects now. Um, still going on. I'm grinding. I'm grinding every day. I'm grinding every day. I'm making calls, I'm sending images and stuff like just to make sure that things are being, being done as well. Kofi, hey, you see here now, back. What is the height of your ceiling? Okay. All right. I'm going to give you the secret. Okay. I'm going to give you the secret. You have to understand you are you building the tropics, airflow, right? You have to understand heat. What happens with heat? Okay. You have to understand that. I am of the mindset minimum ceiling height, 10 feet minimum ceiling height, 10 feet minimum ceiling height, 10 feet. That's the minimum. What I mean by ceiling height, meaning 10 feet is you have factor in screening. You are factoring in your tire work or whatever, tires and stuff like that. When all is done, what is the height? Height meaning not drop down, POP, no, the ceiling. Okay. We need to start dropping the POP2 down. Um, if, if let's say you have some design with drop down, then go up, go 12 feet max, max 12 feet, 11 and a half, 11 and six. Great. You can drop your POP six inches. You still get a height. To, I'm a tall guy, so you know, imagine lifting your hands. You don't want your the fan to cut off your hand. So when you do that, there's air circulation in there. It feels bigger. The airflow is better. So don't let your 99.9% .9 of your builder is going to go with the standard. The standard is not good for you. So ceiling height, do that, okay? Um, if it's on the second floor, you go there too. So that means more block work and all that stuff. And sometimes your bid that might start telling you it's too high. If he knows what he's doing, he can go up 18 feet. He can go up okay. So 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 do that. M minimum 10. Anything above that is great. Max 12 feet uh from a bedroom size. Uh because there's a time that because you have to so start narrow, and as you go up, it opens up, but then you get to a point, you start looking narrow again. Okay, so so 10 feet and up, um, factoring everything. Okay, um, that is how I maintain. Uh, when we build for you, that's what we suggest. We say, listen, let's open this up. So there's airflow, there's, you know, the space look bigger. You don't feel like the ceiling is on top of you. If you are six feet and above, you know, it feels like when you put a fan over there, it's like literally, you know, you can head back that thing. All right? Okay? What is your take about telling the whole bit in our side? It's a no-go. Bad idea, uh, unimaginative, uninspiring. You don't see anywhere in the world, nobody tell the whole bit in our side. Now, I've never seen it in the West. And I've gone to probably 25 states. I've never seen it. I've gone to the East, West, and I've lived in four different states. I've never seen only, I see that in only Africa. Bad idea. Um, you can, if you depend on the design, you can do a little bit stone work, four feet, three feet, three and a half, three and a half, four feet max uh, exterior on a building, but on the ground, uh, we're going concrete, a lot of grass, plants, some minimalistic of pavement blocks. Um, so 
extend our tires, do all that stuff, it's too much. Uh, it becomes when it becomes, uh, will be outdated. And you're looking at these things. Um, and so don't do it. Um, don't do it. Look at landscape designs and you can see how they do. Where did you see in UK, uh, Canada, anywhere in Europe or in the US that you saw that in the external tiling of a building? You, know, you don't see that for a reason. Okay. So don't do it. Um, don't do it. Rod, thank you. I hope I hope the family is good. Thank you. Um, thank you, Divine Doc. Hey, I've not seen you in a while. Thank you for, for joining me. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Carl Hill. We appreciate that. Um, that's the goal. People are trying to push me to go build in Gambia. We will see. Uh, you know, we we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So, but thank you, uh, Sir Leon. So you are in the neighborhood. Um, so make it happen. Make it happen for yourself. Um, and just uh, it's, it's an incredible thing. Um, okay. So I wish you the best of luck, and if we can help you, um, our advice pretty much works for the for the African continent. Okay. Bro, next week is uh, sunny. What it looks like? Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay. I'll see. I'll see. I'll put in the word out there to, to you know, to give you to give you an idea. Uh, but I'm I'm challenging myself on this thing uh, to how to maximize uh, seventy by hundred plot, and um, you know, to to have all the things that you know I want I want to have in there without feeling crap. And so I'm on, on the mindset that 70 by 100 can accommodate a lot of stuff. So I'm using myself as a guinea pig to see if it's possible, uh, you know, to to have, you know, four bedroom, a big pool, um, voice cottage, you know, grass in area, plants and stuff like that. So so I will try to uh, get you a video. Um, I'll make a call. Um, so we can get a video of what it looks like, okay? And then, um, all right, other than that, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Go win. Uh, go win, go beat our homes. And because you know what I'm trying to do? Someday, someday, we're going to have some get-together. It's going to be massive. Um, the invitation will be you have to have a house. That'll be the invitation. And so... Um, so let's do it, okay? Let's do it. We're gonna, we're gonna really, really enjoy. So hang in there, hang in there. You know, build it. someday, someday we're gonna have um, a party of superstars of accomplished people. You know, so and in there will be everybody, single, married, whatever it is, male, female. Everybody's gonna be over there, and we're just gonna celebrate the success. Um, young, old, everything, and then uh, to show that, like, listen, uh, we too, we will enjoy the life that we've given, okay? and we're gonna do it the right way. All right, thank you. Wow, times fly. So go in. Um, the website is there. If you if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. So so don't don't let anything stop you. Go and and win. Uh, regardless, regardless of what is going on, go and win. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Appreciate you. All right.